Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, welcome back to another episode, man. And we got a good one as well now. Um, the last time, the last person we got on was Dean. And I think this guest now is a friend of Dean's as well. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to say all my links down in the description below to the Instagram and stuff like that as well. I do want to give a shout out as well for the intro, the brand new intro, uh, Nicola, Nicola Malloy done it. So, uh, her um, Instagram will be down below as well. Please go check that out. Um, but we're going to get into this now. Uh, Dan, how's it going, man? What's up? What's the story? It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. No bother, man. So, for the people that don't know who you are, what you do, could you please give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, so, keep as simple as possible to say, my name is Dan Boylan. I'm a personal trainer and gym instructor. I was, before quarantine, walking out of... Ben Nunn Gym in Carlisle in Kimmich. And um, before that, I'd walked in Explosive Fitness and Sundrive, um, as well as doing two years in Inchcorp College. In the second year, I'd done a cut off course through the University of Limerick and uh, graduating through the university themselves. So I um, <clears throat> spent a lot of time studying and a lot of time out in the field and uh, truly enjoying my time in the industry as well. Um, and I think yeah. that's about it to say. I suppose I came here really just to talk about mostly mental health and exercise, really, mm. as opposed to anything else. Yeah, because that's what that's what I wanted to ask as well. And um, because I do, I do ask guests. Come on, I do want to know about guests as well. That's what's this podcast all about? Me learning and meeting new people as well. But I want to ask before we get into any of that. I want to ask, uh, when did you start getting interested in fitness and the likes of that? What age were you? When you knew yeah, that that's just something you wanted to do? Been interested like, in fitness my whole life. I would have started getting kicked into it. Um, maybe around the age of, we played fourteen. I started mm. doing mixed martial arts. Um, I played a little bit of ball when I was a kid, mm. but uh, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it didn't really appeal to me. I didn't play too well with others. But mm. when I was left in my own hands, I kind of liked taking the comfort in that. And ever since then, it was kind of just like a straight and narrow road. Like I'm not gonna sit here and say that from the minute I walked into that MMA gym, that I realised I wanted to spend my life in the health and fitness industry. Mm. But, um. School didn't really, school didn't really a, appeal to a man like me. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I just happened to go. What down was that it about? Way. What was it about? Because I know school can be fucking hard for everybody. But what was it about you that you could just couldn't sit still, or like it just wasn't for you the way people are fucking telling you what to do? What was it? What was it about it? Um. Yeah. I suppose maybe the telling you what to do thing would be a big factor of it. Um. I noticed as I get older, I kind of have more of a grudge towards the whole, you know, society thing and the big man telling you about this and that. But back back then, I suppose, it was just one of these things. Sitting still, yeah. I don't know, like, there wasn't so much talk of ADHD back then as there is now, but I feel like it's something, maybe society dropped it into, maybe it's something got to do with me genetics, but you couldn't sit me into a classroom and talk to you for 40 minutes about something I don't care about. I'd much rather just get up and walk the fuck out. That's yeah. not exactly what I've done. Hmm. But if you all have been tempted to do many a day, I would much rather find myself comfortable in a PE hall or on a sports pitch or yeah. something along them. That was, that was what, it sounds like when you were in school, that was kind of your escape for it. Like, like I'd say you were looking forward to PE. You said, fuck it, today's PE. At least we have PE. Push towards going to PE. Or um, would you be involved in like the football after school and stuff like that or any activities after school that involve sports? No, um, I would no. say I contributed really much at all to the school in terms of sports because, as I said, I didn't enjoy team sports and that mm. was all that was pushed to my skill. Mm. There was no way they'd be sending you off to like, um, they wouldn't have any pathways, they wouldn't have done any link ups necessarily with like Drinna or Kona Boxing Club, which are near around to me. I'm based in Drinna now myself. Mm. I went to Moran Road School, that's no disrespect to Moran Road School, yeah, good people there. I just wish that it made more of an effort to push it into more indiv- individualistic sports outside of the school's reach, such as towards maybe corner boxing club, during the boxing club, maybe even Concord SPG, because there's a lot of young fellas out there, you know, very, you know, coming up around this area, not to say it's the worst place in the world, but a lot of people have very unfortunate and um, create a lot of unhappiness yeah. within your circumstance. And it'd be hard to take out your aggression and stuff like that hopping onto a, a pitch with about four year other boys and like the people who end up in them teams what happens to them is they go to one one basketball match against one school and there's one person that they don't like and the next thing they're getting cut off no matter how much talent that that person had hmm. on that uh, 
on that court or on that pitch, that person is cut off straight away because they're saying, that's a bad apple. No, mm. that apple's just in the wrong basket. Put that man into the right basket. Mm. But no, they're too busy just pushing an agenda because they say, our school is great at basketball. Let's fuck everyone into basketball. Mm. What a okay. waste of time. Like, it's the mm. same as the school system, if you ask me, but I'm not going to keep going on about that. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you. And I like the way you, the, the way you said that. It's like, it's not... It's not a bad apple. It's literally just in the wrong basket. That's that's a good fucking way of putting it as well. Um, but for the for the likes of that, right? So you're in you're in school. It's not fucking. It's not what you wanted. It's not what you, where you want to be. And it's mostly like that for a lot of fucking kids as well. And um, when they're growing up and so. But um, so when you said you started at the age of thirteen and so. So when did you start um, um, lifting weights and so, or actually putting yourself in a routine of working out? Was it was it at thirteen? Like, or was it was it a bit older now when you kind of started to learn all about fitness and how what diets like and so? What age was that? Um, getting into actually lifting in the gym. How old have I been? I think I've actually been around fifteen. Mm. I started doing it in between training back when I was doing kickboxing. I was doing kickboxing in um through the liberties up in St Catherine's Gym, Fatima. The show there, I don't even know if they do that there anymore. But I Christy there, Christy ever gets his eyes onto this yet? Mm. Chris used that. <laughs> the things we done in that fucking kickboxing and training with that man, honestly. Mm. If there was cameras there, we would all been fucked out. And that one we called child abuse, man. Mm. It was awful, man. I don't know if you know much about martial arts yet, but the worst part about kickboxing is the stretching. You fucking you lay down into a box split. They tell you to spread your legs wide you can and your man comes and hooks his leg underneath you and sends you that little bit wider. <laughs> oh, shit. And I know I'm getting away from the point. Never mind, let me get back. Hmm. But um, I would have started doing it when I was about 16, yeah, in between training. So I would have been training kickboxing around three times a week and then having two weight sessions a week. Hmm. I would have been going up to body firm at gym. Keep that quiet, yeah, but I wasn't exactly old enough to be in that gym. But I was yeah. in that gym. and I, I was think everybody... Everybody can come dark and whatever. From a young age, but it would be the same pose as the fighting did. But mm. then what happened was, if I'm going to talk about what actually pushed me that way, I had reoccurring injuries in my mm. right shoulder and my left knee, yeah. which is what really pushed me into the rehabilitation side of it and into the strength and conditioning side of it. And mm. then ever since then, I just carried on in school, really, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I think when you were saying that people weren't old enough to go into uh, the Bally Fairman gym and stuff like that. I fucking wasn't old enough and I used to bloody just go in there as well. Like, and I, and lots of, oh, lots man. of people just done it, yeah. And the swimming <laughs> pool and everything and all. Yeah, I remember. Um, but, but for the likes of that, you, you said that you want to come on and talk about, you know, the mental health side of it and stuff like that as well. And what's happening right now, I've noticed as well, because when you, when we were messaging, I actually went onto your page and I can see that you're putting up a lot of videos as well of like routines or what to do or so. And, um, because of what's happening right now, and thank God we're like in phase two when things are supposed to be lifting up. But when it when it start happening and the likes of that was, what were you like um, when this start happening? You realized that you couldn't go out anywhere yet. Like, did you did you have a different mindset towards? or oh, can't go to gym anymore, or did you go right? I know everything. I can just do everything at home. Yeah. Um... Like, I'd love to sit here and say, like, as soon as I heard about the lockdown coming down, uh, mm. I just fuck around, put a pen to paper, and put a plan, a plan to place for an off season. But being honest, um, I would have heard about this lockdown, and I don't really know. And me, me myself, I'm kind of skeptical when it comes to the media, and that comes about absolutely everything that comes out with their milk. Mm. So, when I heard about this whole COVID thing, on one hand, I was thinking, here's the apocalypse coming, but on the other hand, I was thinking, maybe not. Maybe it's just a holiday for a bit. So um, I went and I took the force maybe two or three weeks. And uh, I spent that time basically just chilling out, uh, wasting time, spending way too much time on my screens. And uh, just kicking up the feet easy because before that I was working two, uh, three jobs. <laughs> Man was out here working seven hour weeks before this whole COVID shit kicked in. Um, mm. So I spent about three weeks chilling out. Mm. And uh, eventually dug myself a shallow, shallow little hole of depression that mm. just kind of kicks up on you when you yeah. start doing nothing. Mm. And then that's when the whole six-week plan came into place. And I goes, you know what? Me, a person who's been interested in fitness my whole life, finding myself demotivated, finding myself finding it hard to get back into into fitness. I goes, if I can pull myself out of it, I can show the next man he can do the same thing. Mm. So I've done the six-week challenge to keep me accountable 
keep me accountable for my followers, to keep the followers accountable for themselves, and then just to lift everyone up together. I, I think it's good that the likes of someone like yourself, um, that you're just not going on getting these qualifications and then going right fuck it in the likes of in the likes of this situation here. I'm just going to help myself. You you actually like sat there and thought and going right. If I'm going to do it, I might as well um let people like do it with me. Do you know like you can do it along with me, the likes of that. And I I think that's really good uh, that that you've decided to do that because uh, there is a lot of people that don't know they don't know where to start or what to do. And for likes of your videos and so that they could go along and they can follow along with your videos as well. So that's really fucking good um, that you're doing that. Um, I'm, I'm doing podcasts so I can get people on so that fucking, do you know what I mean? So there's something to do for like a half an hour fucking out a day or so like that as well. And you get to know more people and, do you know what I mean? You get to expand and so like that as well. But um, but for the likes of yourself, um, I want to ask as well, how, what do you think, how much is mental health important when it comes to fitness? How important is it? fitness, um, man. I'm going to go to the gym, right? I'd say that the fitness industry, more so than a lot of industries, I think has kind of like a bad, like, I don't know if I'd say a bad rep, I'm kind of struggling to find the word I'm looking for here, mm. but it kind of has this kind of, an air of superfic- superficiality of it, mm. where people be kind of like, what? You lift weights and, and you're always going and running and you mm. won't even eat a cheeseburger and mm. eat all this shit. Mm. You must be so self-obsessed. Mm. You must be so you must be so interested in what people think of you and, uh, and how you look if you're going to say no to this cheeseburger. And if you're really going to go and train twice a day, what the hell? But if you talk to anybody who has a clue about what they're talking about, who's been doing training for a time, whether it be for a sport or forever, they tell you it's all about their mental. Yeah. They tell you it's all about what's in the head, what's going on between their ears. It's not, it's not about the, the pecs on your chest mm. or the abs on your stomach. It's mm. about what's going on between here. Mm. As being honest, if you're thinking about, like, you know just as well as anybody that if you're sitting around with absolutely nothing to do over a period of time, your mind is going to start creating problems for, himself, for itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're problem agree, solving yeah. race, you know, like mm. we're not some big, super tough, strong species. Like mm. we came up this far through these millions of years mm. through being the best problem solvers. So mm. when you sit when you sit uh, these people down in a room, in a nice padded room, a nice warm room, give them some nice food and just, just give them a bit of entertainment, their mind starts going bonkers when they've got nothing to yeah. annoy them, nothing to stress them out. Mm. And then anxiety comes. So then you're worried about stepping outside the door. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not worried about, you're not worried about the predator down the street getting ready to hack you the bits with a knife anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now, now you're, now you're, now you're sitting there chilling out with your feet up, drinking a cup of coffee, wondering about walking out and seeing your neighbour you had an awkward, awkward en- encounter with. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like five years ago or something. When, yeah. you, when you bring yourself to this level of comfort. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. well, that's yeah. why you, that's why you need exercise in your life. Do you know what I mean? That's what you need. You need to get back into the habit of, you know, walking towards hardship as opposed to running away from it. Like, mm. like the media does bleeding, make you want to do. Oh, nobody's ready for work, aren't we? Now, yeah. all I've heard on the fucking radio is, no, nah, back to work next week. We're not ready for that, aren't we? Now, and yeah. I'm just and it's kind of planting like, in their heads. Yeah, you know, the people just sitting there resonating with that now, as opposed to saying, do you know what? Okay, I'm ready for work, mm. and I am ready to go back and get one up on everyone else who's just been chilling. Mm. No, you never hear that in a million years, would you? No. Like, I, I've seen a few people put up saying, oh, I'm dying to go back to work because of what's happening now, and that's just sitting around being bored. But I do agree when you say, like, the likes of the media and so on, that they, they plant these little small messages of what they say. It's in the title, or it's in the, the way they word things, keywords that you can pick out. And it's actually, as you were saying, that oh, we're not ready to go back to work. And people like that, that have been sitting around doing nothing, and as you said, bad thoughts are coming into their head or so, is that, and the anxiety starts kicking in because a lot of people, like, I know, like, anxiety is fucking around AIDS, but a lot of people, like, fucking nowadays, especially when the fucking internet, we got so used to the internet and on our phones all the time and stuff like that as well, it's fucking caught up so much more and, like, more people know of it now, you know, uh, like, some anxiety and so, and um, a lot of people know how to deal with it, but there's people out there that don't know how to deal with it. And I think for the likes of yourself that... um putting up them videos and you know and giving tips and stuff like that as well it's 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 helping them along the way it's it's just pushing them a little bit more and i was thinking of starting running and um, but i'm like how the fuck like 
like I know this is stupid. I'm like, when will I start? How far will I go? When will I do it? Like, do you get me? Like the likes of that. But for the likes of someone like myself that wants they're like, I'm not messing, man. The other night I got sick of it. So I have fucking these chairs, right? I have the fucking kitchen chairs. And I had a sweeping brush and I goes, I have no fucking weights. So I goes, Joe, fuck it. So I got the sweeping brush and put it between the fucking two holes of the chair. And I have like four chairs, six chairs. And then the more I put on, the more fucking weight it is. And I start fucking lifting weights and going up like that. And I just get me, exactly, they just get me. And I was like, fuck that. I was like, fuck it, man. Because I'm just going to do a blare music on the telly and start just doing it. Just get whatever's around you. My dad was like literally there to me saying, see them cylinder bricks out there. And I was like, yeah. He goes, bring them with you and just start lifting. He goes, you can use anything. And uh, I goes, right, that's fucking fair enough. So you need to get yourself in that mindset. And mm. I, I, I totally agree with you. So what's your, what's your, uh, what's your uh, what would you say for people that want to start something like that? Like, as I said, you can use anything, but what's, what about yourself? Exactly what you said. Hmm. Exactly yeah. what you said. Hmm. Just do it. Hmm. Just do it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, as I said, like, you literally just hit the nail on the head there. Like, you need to be sitting around and you're kind of like, right. I want to do something. Hmm. What do I like to do? I don't know shit about exercise. What am I going to do? And anybody who's something like uh, in a position like this, they might say, oh, I might go for a run. Hmm. Now, anybody, everybody has ran at some stage. You know yeah. what I mean? Even if you're a 50 year old man, you ran around when you were a teenager. You know hmm. how to run, hmm. even if it's a shit run. You know how to you know how to run still. So people usually go to run and then they help YouTube and like how do how do I start running? They're kinda of like, you know, telling you about walk and run interval walk walking and run intervals. Mm. Sorry, and stuff like that. An interval would just basically be a little bit of walking for a little bit of running job, yeah. Most mm. simple thing in the world. That's just the most basic. But people they'll they'll go onto YouTube, right? Mm. And they'll overload themselves with information from it. And they'll be like, right. I want to run, but I'm terrified of injury. And I had an injury in the past. Yeah. So how am I going to address this injury? Am I going to have to rehab this injury now before I start running? I'm yeah. like, how about me nutrition? What's the point of me running if I'm eating shit all day? And I'm, I'm like, am I really willing to change up my whole diet? And all this shit happens, yeah? If you had a all out the window and just got out for a walk. Yeah. Just got out, just got up. If you had 20 minutes clear in your schedule, and instead of you measuring up the 100,000 different things you can before you start exercising, if you were to literally just get up and walk, or if you're in a decent physical condition, get up and pick up a jog and see how long you can hold it for. Mm. Just check your phone and then stop and check your phone again. Mm. And then say, right, I've done two minutes of jogging before I had to stop, right? Next mm. tomorrow, mm. I'll do three. Yeah. Set goals for yourself, set targets. It's actually so simple i seen a quote there would have been about a month ago and it said like do do five push-ups mm. tomorrow do six mm. and then repeat mm. that's what it is mm. it's not a uh, it's not figure out everything there is to figure out about it and just going it's about just getting into the habit of going when you think about exercise you just go when it's time to exercise you go you don't start adding up all your variables. You just do it, and you make it a habit of doing it. That's yeah. it's. I, I know. I know. You, somebody might look at me and say, "You're making this more simplistic than it is. This is more so simple to you than it is to the next man." It's not. It's when you start making it more complicated. That's when you shoot yourself in the foot. If you were to do one thing, if you were to run two minutes, if you were to run, if you were to jog for two minutes now today, mm. and then tomorrow you added a minute on, and then over the course of five days you added on five minutes. Mm. What's that as a percentage of increase in your uh, in your percentage? Like, what's that like, like a 400, 500 percent increase or something? Mm. I don't know. Like, you can tell I didn't do good on maths, anyways. Yeah, you get where I'm coming wrong. from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, mm. and that's only in the course of a week. I think people kind of get so impatient that they're kind of like, if I'm not a great runner in one month, I'm going to be so disheartened. What's yeah. the big bleeding hurry, man? Mm. What's the best mm. one chunk more than you've done in the last? two years and yeah. then we are moaning that you're not in great shape yet mm. do you know what i mean give yourself some time mm. it does it does take time though um progress and seeing progress in yourself when you're walking out and you want to change your body and the likes of that or your fitness and you want to improve your fitness and um, mm. it does take a lot of time you have to be really fucking patient with it and you've be dedicated you have to put yourself in the mindset of that you know and um, you need you need to fucking do that and 
you need to remind yourself as well that when you're like, oh, I don't want to go for a jog today or I'm, I'm not doing this or it's been three or four days, you need, to rem- you need to sit down and you need to tell yourself, literally, even if you have to fucking say it out yourself, you have to say and go, what was the reason you fucking started this? Is because you wanted to fucking change. You wanted to better yourself. So get the fuck up, put on your fucking shoes, whatever shoes you have. I don't even care if you have running shoes or not and get the fuck out and just do a half now. Be Do another extra minute, as you said, or do an extra four or five minutes. Exactly. Do you get me? So I, I fucking agree. I agree with you. Did you have any uh, preconceptions or exercises before you got chatting to me there today? What's that? Sorry? Did you have any preconceptions of exercise before you got into chatting with me today? Like, as I said, it feels like you're echoing everything I say. You know, it feels mm-hmm. like you obviously had your own little ways of thinking about exercise and itself. And I'd like to hear your opinion on it if it's not too much to ask. If I'm like, not breaking the rules. <laughs> like, no, no. For the likes of myself, I, I started working out when I was 18. And um, I fucking, I was mad into it. And uh, I could fucking see an improvement in myself. And then I stopped. And that was got to do with mental health. Um, and then I went back. Stopped again, went back. I'm that type of person that needs to get a kick up the hole and needs to fucking get in and do it, Jimmy. But um, I've been fucking, I've been fucking just walking out now with them fucking chairs in there and that fucking sweet and brush the past few nights and I'm just getting back into it. And I can't wait till them fucking gyms be open and stuff. But I went to Inch Car. I done a year in Inch Car and Spartan Fitness. I done, I done a year in there in 2016. Um, I went and done it. And what's it? Health and fitness was it? It was a sport and fitness, health and fitness. Yeah, sport and fitness. I think it was sports coach. And fitness. It was. It was supposed to be a two-year course. I'm doing it for a year. It was yeah, 2016, 2015, or something. 2016. That's that no yeah, that's that. That's the fucking year I went into. Did you go to the yeah, same course the same year? I graduated school that year, so I would have hopped in the next one. I'm pretty sure something like that. Yeah, you're probably. You are, yeah. You're 23. Yeah. I'm 24. 24. 24. Yeah. No, I'm only 22. Yeah, so there would have been a year there or so, but I, you seem familiar. I've probably seen you around somewhere. So. You probably have. You probably fucking have. But yeah, for the likes of that, I got real interested in sport and fitness. That's what I was fucking sport and fitness. I got really interested in that, and I only done a year of it, and due to fucking anxiety and shit and all, when it came to the tests, because uh, I'm not really good at fucking uh, when the likes of all that uh, learning stuff and stuff, so, um, yeah, fucking yes. panicked, um, and I was like, well, I'm not yeah. doing the second one. Fuck that. Um, but. And um, my perspective in it of the whole fucking thing is, is that I just think that you need to, you need to look after yourself. You need to look after your body. You need to fucking, you need to work out as much as you can. You need, you just, and it's not, as you said, it's not the f- look good of it. It's for literally, as you said, I know, as you said, it sounds like it's fucking echoing, but it's literally what I fucking think about it. It's literally for your head and to keep you fucking on the straight and narrow and stuff like that as well. So if that fucking, if that answers your question in any way, like to get me like, like so that. Yeah, I think you nailed it there, man. I'm very happy with that. I feel like, you know, I feel like at the root of it all, it's getting you back in touch with what's real mm. when you go to exercise. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like, I feel like people be getting so stressed these days about a bunch of imaginary problems. Mm. It's just overthinking. People are sitting around, they have, they have too much time in their hands and they're just sitting around overthinking. If you're overthinking, you're fucked. Like, mm. you so I feel like if you hand somebody do you know what I mean? It's hard to overthink a slap to the face. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that, that sounds a bit uh, bit too maybe aggressive or vulgar or something yeah. for me to say something like that. Yeah. But if you were sitting there worrying all day about a slap to the face, would you much rather just get a slap to the You'd face? You'd rather get a slap to the face. Get it over with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you might think you wouldn't want to be comparing exercise to a slap to the face, but to be honest, you would kind of want to compare it to a slap to the face. Like, yeah. But you need a good clatter. As I said, I've been saying that to everyone I goes, in the world we live in these days, a person will look every corner of this room, of, of, of this community, for a hug, when what you need is a good slap across the head. Like you're talking about a good kick up the hole. Yeah. Do you know how many people I know who benefit much more from a good kick up the hole than a, a big hug, like what they're mm. looking for? It's actually mm. nuts. Like, Some people I'm not, just I'm not need that. Thing, to yeah. say, like, you need a hug, then mm. oh, you're the worst. Everyone needs a hug, John. Even I need a hug sometimes. Mm. But, uh, but like seriously, like honestly, people people have gone really soft from being comfortable too much. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the real what I'm saying. Like getting comfortable. You can get uncomfortable out in them roads when you're ten k deep. You can barely even breathe, mm. and uh, and your legs feel like balloons underneath you. They're on fire. Mm. 
then when you come out of that run, you don't realize how much tougher you actually feel, mm. how much more confident in yourself you actually feel for these problems that are coming towards you. Because when you run, you only get to forget about the problems for a short space of time. But when you come back, you come back with a renewed perspective that will re remain with you maybe for the rest of the day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A tougher perspective. We can see things from a Hawkeye view instead of being in the middle of every single little stressful situation and feel like you need to fight your way out of it. Mm -hmm. No, you're just looking at it and you're saying, I've done this before, I can do it again. Just like I survived that road, I'll survive this. I and mean, it just gives you a better perspective for everything. I, I believe in my own personal opinion, anyways. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. I, I fucking totally agree with you. Um, I, I like the way I like the way you have your little fucking your, your points that you're making to get me your sayings inside that. I fucking I, I like it. Um, it shows that you're a real positive person as well. Uh, when it comes to the likes of this, and I know that all of us can get fucking. I don't care who the fuck you are. You still get down every now and again, but I can see that you you don't let that get to you. To get me, it's just real fucking positive, and I I like people like that. Real fucking positive people. Um, mm -hmm. but I literally only do these things for like a half an hour. Um, these podcasts. So I'm gonna get into the last segment. And I say this all the time. Um, you probably heard if you watch Dean's episode. I don't care if you're a fucking scientist or anything. I still ask you this question if we're on any topic. So guys, you know what it is by now. We're going to get into the last segment. And it is ghost stories. Right. So what's happening, man, is I have two questions for you. Right. One, do you believe in the afterlife, reincarnation, anything like that? And two, do you have a story you can tell us or know anyone that's told you something that you were like, fuck, that's freaky. I believe in the afterlife, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, do I believe in a fucking afterlife? What a question they hit me with in the morning, man. Mm. Man, that's, a, that's definitely a PM question there you have to hit me with. Um, not really. Yeah, that's all no. right. Yeah. yeah. Not really. Mm. I don't really believe in... I don't really believe it's on. Like, I believe it's literally knocking off the lights and, and uh, hitting the best sleep you've ever had in your life. Yeah, be honest. Yeah, no, you're, you're, the, well you're not the first one that said that now. Yeah, no, well deserved rest after mm. this bleeding. No job of a life that you do. Mm. Um, when, I'm, when, I, when it comes to scary stories, like, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say that I've had any like paranormal experiences, but mm. I've had a few near death experiences. Right, well, you can either like, share one of them if you want. I know you're looking at if me. You're I know you're one. looking at me and you're like, this yeah. man was near death experience. Yeah. Don't you go getting the police on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You can you can say whatever you want. You can share one if you want. No, no, no. None of that. Like, none of that. Yeah. No, when I was young, I had a few close calls. Mm. Uh, I was on holidays once, I remember. Me ma, me ma, right? My mother is like my own fucking guardian angel. I mm. swear to God. You look at me now, you think this fella's a bit nut job. You want to see me when I was a kid, man? Mm. There was no fucking control on me. And I had the most bleeding, overprotective ma ever. Mm. So best believe with this and this, that just did not work well. And it resulted in a few near-death experiences of me. Mm. I remember uh, one time my ma was telling me, we were, um, we were in Ponza or something like that. And I was walking on this wall, like it was just three of us walking, and I was just there walking on this wall beside because I don't know when I was a kid, if there was a wall, I'm walking on it. If it's walkable, yeah. it's just what wall. It was like, do you know what I mean? I didn't even have a say, but I just seen the wall, whatever. And I was walking on it, having a great time, skipping on the bleeding thing and all, right? And next thing I almost go to fall to the side, my man grabs me by my arm, by my arm right? Mm. Looks over the wall, and there's like a 40 foot drop into fucking concrete, right? And this was me at the age of four. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like, I was like, mom was had a bleeding heart attack, man. I had to stay in the hotel the rest of that night. And then there was another time as well, um, when I was just in one of the parks, I can't remember what park it was. Like uh, maybe Bushy Park or something. something like, I don't know, I was a kid, Phoenix Park maybe. But yeah. there was some water around anyways. And uh, I was running through the grass. And you ever see the grass when you get to the water? And it just looks like more grass. But yeah, it's just like, fucking swamp. It's like a swamp. Yeah. Fuck all their ground yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you run at the thing. <laughs> I couldn't swim or nothing, right? <laughs> so I bleed and ran. I, I just running off the concrete into some... I seen water. I was like, water. Like a big mm. fucking Neanderthal ahead of me that I have. Ran over to it. And the next thing I just disappeared. My mom watched me like, Daniel, Daniel. I'm like, what? Turn around to her. Next thing I can't breathe in the water. 
Okay, <laughs> man, grabs me by my fucking ankle, yeah. yeah. Holds me across the, across the oak. I was only about a year old, or about five at the stage. I thought Jesus I was going to die, man. I was going to be fucking round like nothing. I was barely even touch water before. I was terrified of it. Yeah. And then the last oh, time something weird really like that would have happened would have been, um, I was at a, a graveyard for one of me, um, one of me, me uncles or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's sitting around a graveyard in Mount Jerome or something like that. And uh, I see me cousin there across the way, and he's like, "Hello!" And me, obviously being the dog that I am, starts running crazily towards him just just to say hello to him, but yeah. I hadn't seen him. I mean, man's like, "Daniel, stop!" Right? And I would never ever stop. But this one time, I heard it in our voice, and I turned around. I'm like, "What the?" And uh, I looked forward, and not even four feet away from me was there just this big, huge chasm in the middle of the uh, the, the fucking the graveyard. It must have been about a 15, 20 foot drop. Oh. I was only about eight years of age. I didn't see it at all because mm. with the way all the gravestones were, it just looked like flat ground going yeah. all the way. And mm. I was only looking at my cousin who was about 20, 30 feet away from me. Right. We wouldn't have seen that drop at all. That's three times I almost went there with my ma saved my life. And that's only oh. the three of when I was a younger kid. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I suppose that's it. I'd like to call me my, my guardian angel. Yeah. That's good. But I don't really believe in the afterlife or nothing like that. Hmm. What's your yeah. own personal opinion on the thing? On the afterlife? Man, I, I like to think that after this, it's fucking, I like to think that this is like a waiting room and we're fucking being tested. You know, the likes of that shit. Um, and after this, you go, you go somewhere else. Um, I also like to think this place is a simulation as well. I fucking say them theories about simulation. It's just interesting. I know it's not fucking real, but it just interests oh, me. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't yeah. say that. It just interests me. Fuck are we supposed to know that? Where yeah, is the yeah, bunch yeah. of bleeding? Knuckle dragger. I was there. I was talking to some girl and I was, she was mad into conspiracy theories. And she goes, tell me your best conspiracy theory. And goes, this is, all, this is a whole simulation. And she goes, yeah, I like that one. I goes, imagine if we actually met before and we cracked the code on this app. Like, imagine we cracked the code and then they found out. And then this is like the hundredth time we fucking cracked the code and all. And then they had to reset us and all. Like, I just started going mad with it, like going into it. And she started fucking laughing. Like, um, and she was like, that's fucking interesting. Listen to it. But it's fucking, it's just mad when you can make up all that shit. And that's what, what it comes back to when you are saying that when people are sitting around doing fuck all, they can think and they overthink and shit like that. And you know what I mean? Like people like that. That's where my mind goes. My mind's just fucking races there. That's where my mind goes. All these weird fucking shit. I love thinking all that uh, stuff like, um, for the likes of that. But for the likes of myself, I would, I would like to believe um, that after here, you go somewhere else. But like the likes of yourself, it's just more of a fucking, man, you just, you close your eyes. But I just think, what was it like before you were here? That's what it was. Exactly. You don't fucking know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like. Well, here, yeah, look, I believe there was nothing before I was here. Yeah. But I was okay with that back then. So yeah. it should be as well. You didn't okay fucking. You didn't know. Don't like, be greedy with the world. Don't be greedy. You are greedy enough to even be here, man. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Talk yeah. about you want two worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was saying we were. I was fucking talking to me mates, and they were like, uh, they were sitting down and they were like, uh, oh, they're they're fucking writing up CVs and so whatever, and um, they were there going, what the fuck, what achievements do I have? And I goes, man, you're achieving than yourself. And he goes, what? And I goes, man, out of everybody, you fucking want to race there, like, you like that stupid talk, like, oh, you won the race, you put down your CV, say I'm fucking here, I fucking, I'm here, like, of all them, I fucking bet everybody like like likes that, and you start laughing. It's like, put it's down there in your CV, you're achieving. It's true, yeah. I'll keep that in mind for when somebody has a loser mentality. I'll tell them yeah. that. You weren't the loser when you got to that egg, were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's your first fucking achievement. There you go. Like. Yeah, there you go, yeah. you would be like, what's your, what's your greatest achievement you've ever been proud of? Do you have many people in the world that'd be like, mm, never. Yeah, yeah, my phone's going to die in 40 seconds, yeah. Yeah, no, you're all right. Right, so guys, uh, Dan, thanks very much for coming on, man, and being part of the podcast. Uh, we'll get you back on. We'll talk more fucking about it as well. We'll get more into it. Um, guys, thanks for watching. watching. Um, remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Dan, thanks very much for coming on, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, the likes of that. Thanks very much for having me, man. All the best. Take care yeah. of yourself. No problem. Go on.